All right, this is Jake from Make and Forge uh, doing the video today. It might be a two-part video because it's going to be a little long. Um, I'm going to be making an outdoor fireplace poker like this one. Uh, going to be forge welding the poker end, shaping and forge welding this end here back together, and then making the handle end up here. Uh, it's half inch square stock, mild steel for the material. Right now I've got the end in the forge getting hot. Again, this might be kind of long, so it might be a two-parter. So we'll get to work here and get started. Again, burning at the coal forge up here at the Austerlitz Historical Society. I actually just had a group come through and did a quick demonstration of the wall hook for them, so back to work on the uh, fire poker. Check the camera angle, make sure it's good here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Material, so it does take a minute for it to get hot. But once it gets hot, it stays hot fairly well. It's almost there. All right, let's get to work. So the first thing you want to do is again make a blunt taper. Working close to the edge of the easel to form a fairly blunt taper. Working back and forth from two sides. Get it hot again. Now we've got our point, we'll start extending this taper back. Now we don't want this too thin because this is going to be the part of the side of the hook to grab the logs and pull it. So we want to leave it with some good mass, you know, good thickness. So you can see it's still a fairly thick point, which is what we want. So now to round it over. You can leave it square if you want. I like to round it over, so that's what I'm doing. So, just tapering out, well, rounding out the taper, excuse me. So, working from two sides, knocking down the corners, and then flipping over the other two sides. There are two corners, excuse me. So, you're going from square to octagonal. So, once you go the octagon shape, it's fairly rounded, but I'll take one more pass at it and make it a little more round. The more round you want it, all you're doing is knocking more corners down. That's how you go from square to round. Four sides and four corners. Knock the corners down, you go to eight sides and eight corners. So that's an octagon, fairly round at that point. And the more rounds you want, the more corners you get down. So 4, 8, 16, 32, however 
however round you want it, and just keep hitting more corners in. You can almost just kind of rotate around and hit it at a certain point. Just kind of planishing the corners down. And try to keep it flat on the anvil as you're hitting it. And by flat, I mean taper flat, not the parent stock flat. It, it'll allow the anvil to do more work on the opposite side of what you're hitting. Whereas if it's not, if the plane of the piece that you're striking isn't flat against the anvil, you're just going to bend your stock around more. So now it's fairly rounded. What I'm going to do next is heat up about this much, and I'm going to make a cut with a hardy about here. Bend it back and weld that joint solid. So for that, I'll be using a cutting hardy. I'm going to cut almost probably about three quarters of the way through and now let me bend the stock back without it breaking off and give me a nice a nice clean seam for the belt. about where I want the joint to be and yeah I don't want to cut all the way through about three quarters or so that will leave enough material to make a bend but I want to get hotter because I want it to move easy you probably see that notch in there it's about how much you want left, about three quarters of the way through or so. So put that back in the fire because I want that little lip to bend really easily. I don't want it to break off. The flux we're going to be using for the weld is 20 wheel team borax. You can get pretty much at any uh, supermarket or hardware store. It's the same thing you'd use to add in with your uh, laundry. So now we got nice heat on the material. It'll fold over and bend without breaking off. Before I bend it all the way over, I want to brush out any loose scale. The scale will stop your weld. Bring that almost all the way down because you have to have room for the flux to get in there and work. You don't want it to be touching yet because you want the flux to be able to get in and melt. So I'll start by applying some flux to it. Again, it's powdered borax. It'll melt onto the surface. You want to let that melt into that joint. I like to do it from both sides. And I'm going to do this again. I'm going to put it back into the fire and let that really melt down and get in there. And I'm going to rotate the piece as it's in there so the flux just doesn't all drip off on one side. When you're welding, you want a really clean fire. If you have uh, clinkers in your forge, get the clinkers out and have plenty of good coat. That way you have a nice clean hot fire for the weld. So I'll bring that up to a higher temperature, apply some more flux, and then put it back into the fire to bring it to welding. So I'll 
apply some more flux. It's at a higher temperature. I'll apply some more flux to the joint. Let it really melt in there. If the flux isn't is not molten, it will not do its job. start to melt. That's what gives you your, your material for making the weld. And again, I'll rotate the piece back and forth a couple times as I'm bringing it up to that temperature. I like to do about three welding heats on a piece to make sure it's, you know, to make sure the, the seam is good and strong, that the weld is good and strong. Now your first take, you don't just want to hit it super hard and knock all the molten material out. You lose all your ability to, to the weld. You got to have that molten material there for the weld to take place. So it's almost there. I'll kind of slow off on the air a little bit. There we go. The first hit will be a little lighter. As I said, I don't want to blow that molten metal out of the joint. So now it's still very hot. What I'm going to do is wire brush and reflux it. So I'll apply more flux, put it back into the fire, and do it again. Let's say I'll do at least three welding heats on something this size. If I'm not sure about it, I'll do a fourth heat. quick so you don't lose all the heat in the piece. Again, rotating the piece when it's in the fire. You want to heat it as evenly as possible. careful not to burn it up because welding heat is almost burning heat. You'll easily burn the piece up if you're not careful. You want to watch for sparks. You want to listen to it. You slow down the air and listen. If it sounds like you're cutting with a torch, it's getting too hot and burning. So I'm going to pull it out again. And again, it will hit not incredibly hard, but a little firmer than the first time. And then also from the sides. I'll do the same thing one more time. I'll brush it. I'll apply the flux again. Really let it melt into that joint. On both sides, the flux stops the formation of scale. It helps the metal stay clean. Cleaner the joint, the better the weld. So you see, I got the borax on there melting in again. Back into a fire. If you're going to be doing welds, it's kind of nice to build up some extra coat. Whenever you're done, I like to build up some coat for the next fire. If I know I'm going to be doing a lot of welding the next time I'm here, or the next time I'm smithing at all, I'll build up some extra coat, some extra good clean coat. So that when I go to weld, if the fire is a little low, I have nice clean coat to put right on there. Instead of having to spend more time in the middle of the project to make up more coat. It's, it's a good habit to get into. Another good habit is when you're done for the day, you know, when you're on your last project and you're done, just do a forge weld. Just, just, just weld anything. You know, it, it takes practice to get good at it. So at the end of the day, just take a piece of quarter inch stock and do a weld. Again, 
and rotate the piece in the fire. Make sure uh, you, know, make the, you want it to heat evenly. sides and opposing sides and that should be pretty good now I'm going to keep it hot for the next few hits I want it almost a welding temperature when I'm working with it now that weld just formed you don't want to start working it cold and risk breaking the weld apart especially if it didn't take as well as you thought it did or, you know, if the weld doesn't take all the way, you can very easily uh, snap it apart. So, I'm going to now make the pointed end of the poker, the, the end you use to push with, not the end of pull with. Again, back to making a point. And if your weld didn't take, you can usually tell here because the joint will start to take ripping apart. But if it doesn't, uh, if it all moves as one piece and it doesn't come apart, it's usually a pretty good sign that your weld took. shaping the pushing end of the pointer. It doesn't need, again, it doesn't need to be crazy long and thin. You're going to want some material there if you really have to push on something. So you don't want to make it too thin and have it bend around. back and just kind of break the edges. Okay, so next I'm going to open this up. It's already starting to open a little bit from where it wasn't welded towards where it was. And what I'll use to bend that out at first is a flat chisel. This is a hot cut chisel, but it's nice and narrow. You can probably see how thin it is. So that, I'll use that kind of like a little pry bar to start. Again, I want it nice and hot. And right here is what tells you if your weld took or not. If it just keeps going and opening and opening and opening, your weld didn't take. You can go back and try it again. Nice and hot. I'll stick that in there and just kind of use it like a pry bar to start opening it up. And then what I do is I usually just put it in the hardy hole of the anvil, give it a few taps to bend it over. Straighten it out. I want to put a little bit of a, just a little bit of a hook end on this side here. So I'll heat it up and just bend that little piece over the horn of the anvil. So if you have to pull on something, you can grab into it. You know, just a little bit of a, of a bend in that hook. So I'll 
Get it a little bit more, a little flatter, and go back and just bend the very edge of it backwards. You say, so you have a little bit of a, a little bit of a hook to grab it, to grab onto something with. So, I'm going to stop the video here and make this a two-parter because this is getting kind of long. And I want to let this cool off a little bit. So, I'm going to stop the video for now.